uh, very much want to think about time available. You want to think about uh, to, how fast do I have to do this? Is it in an hour? Is it in 20 minutes? Is it uh, sometime later today or is it in a fucking week? Uh, last one, less, less likely, of course, unless you're playing MSO. But, um, you know, and one thing about the time available, I've seen Rad Lover fail at this a few times. Uh, I think most of you know where. Why we tend to make a, a good, uh, a, actually a good plan, but it just takes too lo so long to execute that you're gonna end up in failing it, just be uh, just be because uh, you didn't accomplish your task in time. And uh, in real life, that happens a lot too. Where like uh, your battalion CEO has to de decide that uh, by a certain time he needs his the rest of his battalion to hit something, and he has uh, set off uh, a platoon or a company to do a uh, do a secondary objective or an objective that needs to be done before the rest of the battalion can move. And then he sets a time for, the, for you. And if you don't complete this within the time, you've essentially failed because the rest of the battalion is still pinned down because it can't move before you're ready. And finally, we have civilians, uh, which is always a consideration cold, uh, in Cold War scenarios and uh, low-intensity war scenarios like uh, Afghanistan, or Iraq, or Pakistan, or whatever. Um, you need to think about the civilians. You need to think about uh, do, do the civilians know we're coming? What will the civilians do when we come? Will they flee? Will they st stay in the houses? Will they come out and fight us? Um, so what in general are the enemy? Uh, what, are, what are the civilians going to do? And how should we deal with them? Like if they want to escape, you know, do we want to let them through our lines? Do we want to send them around? Do we want them? Uh, um, Fucking staying in the houses. If they stay at the houses and you want them out of there, how you get gotta get them out of there and so forth. That's also uh, in your planning phase and in your analysis phase. You need to find out these things before you and go ahead and make your uh, make your briefing. Uh, in some of these Cold War missions, though, uh, civilians is pretty easy because it's not going to be a factor. Okay, any questions on uh, MetTC? I assume most of you guys know this already because that's uh, basic leadership knowledge. Okay. Well, an important part about civilians is also considering um, any uh, any dangerous uh, areas. Basically, you know, it might restrict your weapons fire, for example. So if you have civilians in the area, you can't just employ artillery all over the fucking place because you know you blow up civilians by doing that. Um, Unfortunately, we don't have enough missions actually that simulate that environment, you know, good enough. Yeah, and they usually end up being having some weird parameters. Like if you kill ten civilians, you just fail outright. That's. Yeah, and so did you cleverly where if you kill a civilian, it spawns an insurgent. Yeah, that did pretty cleverly. Um, but yeah, that's a, uh, definitely a factor you want to take into account. Uh, also. Uh, in general, you don't want to conduct combat operations in in a inhabited environment like a town, for for instance. You actually don't want to do that, um, both because, of course, uh, urban warfare is fucking dangerous. Um, fun little fact I heard is uh, if you go into a town uh, with a force five times greater than the enemy, you should expect 50% casualties. Uh, so towns are, in general, danger, uh, dangerous. And you don't want to fight among civilians because when you do that, civilians die in great numbers, and they die. And there's usually a lot more civilians killed than soldiers. Uh, so you generally don't want to do that. Of course, uh, armor players don't tend to care. Okay. Once you conducted your mission analysis, you want to go on to uh, making your operational order, your briefing. And uh, for an operational order, there's some factors you need to take into account. And there's an acronym for that that's called. Uh, SMEC, uh, SMESC, it stands for uh, Situation, Mission, Execution, Sustainment, and Command and Control. That's five points. In, in Denmark, it's just called a five point uh, uh, up order. But it's five points you need to touch up on. If you don't mention one of these points, then you haven't made a complete plan. Simple as that. So for, uh, first off, once you've done your MTC, you want to make a task organization. Um, not necessarily uh, 
a bunch of changes, but you sometimes want to make, uh, uh, if, for instance, if you're doing a raid or a assault or something, you want to make and decide on an assault element, a support element, a breach element, and a security element, um, depending on how much time you have to divide up units and so forth. But you want to think about who's going to do what because you need to plan, um, plan for those four things. And the first real point is situation. And in there you need to mention the general situation, like if there's time constraints, what you need to do to win this mission, what you need to do to lose, or what will happen, uh, how, how you will lose, and the uh, boundaries and limitations, if there's some, somewhere you shouldn't go, or something you shouldn't do. Next thing, uh, very important, is enemy situation. And here you need to consider the enemy's strength, the enemy's co and the enemy's composition, so you need to know how many guys there are, and how, uh, what kind of units uh, they have, and in the composition you need to consider enemy's maneuver capabilities. Uh, are they on foot? Are they in vehicles? Uh, are they in fucking helicopters? And how um, how fast can they move? Are they in good shape? Are they in bad shape? So forth. Um, you need to consider their fires. Do they have any fire support? Um, mortars, artillery, whatever. And you need to. And when you brief you, uh, people, you need to tell them this. You need to tell them how much they're facing and what they and what they're composed of. Maneuver capabilities, fire capabilities. Was that a question? Okay. Um, you need to know it, the en enemy's intelligence, and that relates to what we said before about uh, your mission. What does the enemy know about you guys? Do they know what we're ten intending to do? That we're intending to assault them? Um, do. Uh, or do they think we're doing something completely different? Do we actually have the intelligence surprise? That's in the, the intelligence section. And how is the enemy gathering his intelligence? Like if he's uh, actively listening on our radio channels, and you want to tell your people that limit your comms on the radio because the enemy fucking hears what you're saying. And um, if he has really hardcore intelligence, he's just going to triangulate your radio position and put fire support right on to top of your head, uh, which can happen in real life. Um, Next thing, enemy's command and control. What, uh, how effective is the enemy's command and control? Can he control his unit effectively once they're engaged, uh, or is it gonna be, a, uh, or is he gonna act in a total clusterfuck and you're gonna, uh, and as soon as you want to firefight, they're completely out of the action and you can just take them out. Air defense, um, mission uh, is mission critical if you have uh, helicopters or uh, air support. You need to think about what kind of air defense does the enemy have. And how's it, how's it employed? So if you hear about the SA-7 or SA-9 missiles, then you need to make a plan for uh, how to avoid that, and you need to uh, you need to brief your pilot about um, that there um, what and what these threats are and where they're supposed to be. Next thing is mobility and counter mobility. Um, in my mind, it's essentially the same as maneuver, just uh, how fast the enemy could be able to move. And even more importantly, how fast is the enemy capable to move on you? So, um, one thing is that they can move pretty quickly, but the other thing is that once you start engaging them, how quickly can they get the rest of their units to fight you? So, for instance, if the enemy has a ha uh, armored reserve, he has a fucking high uh, counter mobility. So as soon as you're in counter attack, you should expect no more than five minutes you have tank uh, tanks rolling around, uh, around your flank. And... Um, but if the enemy's uh, surface is light infantry, for instance, then you uh, shouldn't expect them to get there fast and you could get to their reserve, essentially. Um, service and support. How uh, How is the enemy's supply situation? Does he has pl have plenty of ammo or um, poor ammo? And uh, can he ev evacuate his casualties or will he have to deal with them himself? And, and so forth. Um, Next thing, next major point is in uh, the enemy situation is that this position, what are, uh, what are they doing and how are they arrayed? Because uh, in some mission like Hamburg, you actually have um, the, uh, the enemy placed uh, 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 or sp spread out across your objective area, where if, uh, if they had all been assembled at your southernmost objective, you wouldn't be able to complete the mission because there would be so much overwhelming firepower there. So you need to consider uh, if you were the enemy or if you were in the enemy's position, how would you dispose your units and uh, 
or if you even know this because you got a recon report, then you need to just put that into your considerations. And you need to tell your people that I expect them to put a squad here, a squad here, two other squads here, and the armored reserve to be here, for instance. And in relation to that, the disposition needs to think of their most likely course of action. Once you engage them, what they're going to do? Are they going to fall back? Are they going to... Are they going to uh, just stay where they are, disposed as they are, and fight as they are? are they, or are they going to move up their units and fight you? And this is just the most likely one. It's, uh, my opportunity to, like, to say, less likely, more uh, or uh, most likely less dangerous. So that's not the worst thing they can do, but it's what's uh, probably going to happen. Next thing is less likely, more dangerous, or most dangerous course of action. And that's... Uh, and that's telling your people what's the worst thing the enemy can do to us. So they know when, uh, what's the worst thing the enemy can do. And uh, uh, a most likely course of action could be uh, enemy will uh, attempt to uh, fix, what, uh, fix what fire and, uh, and uh, maneuver elements to, uh, to our flanks in order to force us to withdraw or cause casualties on the draw or whatever. Most, li most dangerous course of action, enemy will fix us with fire will outflank us and will put uh, and will uh, will uh, use fire support to effectively destroy our platoon before we can fall back that could be a most dangerous course mission so it's not necessarily likely but it's it's something they can do and if you're not careful they will do that okay then what in situation we always and uh, we should always mention our friendly situation and that is uh, what the higher unit mission is, and that's a uh, company, maybe even battalion uh, level. What, what are we actually supposed to be doing here? What, uh, what, and what are we supposed to achieve? What's uh, what's our unit's mission? And then higher commands attend. Pretty much the same thing, because one thing is we got a mission. The next thing is what do we actually t intend to do uh, in order to complete this mission. And you people need to know what your higher units intend is. So, uh, so uh, if you are killed as a platoon leader they can still accomplish that intent. Um, and then finally, if you have adjacent units in on the map, not very much in game, but in real life, that always happens, then you need to tell your people what the task and purpose of those units are. And, uh, and how they relate to your objective, basically. So any questions on the situation? Okay, because this is a point where um, a lot of platoon leaders tend to fail and uh, and just sit back well, and assume that people know the situation. Uh, where are we? Sorry, I, I kind of got lost in the uh, reading the notes. Where are we in the notes? We're in, uh, is it, uh, in the operational orders in the situation. All right, Age, okay, uh, eight, specific situation. Okay, yeah, I got that. No way. A good note by Exo, counter mobility. Uh, that could also be how the enemy intend to prevent our uh, mobility, like putting down tank traps, uh, mines, or other stuff. Okay, so that's uh, that situation. Uh, next thing, really simple part is uh, mission. That's uh, that's that's just you're saying our unit uh, will conduct a raid or an offensive or whatever in order to uh, uh, with the objective of uh, whatever, no later than or before this time or uh, or something like that. And usually, also you would say in order to achieve something. That's just uh, that's just pretty simple. That's just so everyone knows what we're doing and why we're doing it. And then comes execution. And that's the that's the part that can be extremely long. And uh, that's where you cover um, commander's intent. Uh, that's your intent, and basically the concept of the of the operation, how uh, you see yourself accomplishing this operation, and. Uh, just making sure I get everything here. Yeah, concept operation. That's basically a statement of uh, of your intent 
which explains your mission in relation to the higher commander's intent, and it consists of an explanation of the pur uh, of the purpose of the task, a general method method to achieve the task, and the end result desired. So that's just uh, that's just you saying, this is what we're supposed to be doing. Then you put the uh, groupings and tasks. Usually, uh, in armor, we tend to just maintain our squads, which is also fine, especially if you have some good flexible squads. Uh, other groupings and tasks, you mentioned mention your own troops. And if you have attachments like FO and JTAG, uh, who are they going to be grouped with? Are they going to be grouped with anyone and so forth? And uh, other arms in sequence of seniority, as it's called. So that's if you have engineers, uh, you mentioned those and how they're going to be grouped and tasked and so forth. Um, yeah, in constant of operation, uh, let me just check this to make sure. Concept of 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 uh, operations, you would also give out um, stuff like uh, how uh, how you intend to accomplish your mission and your t and time frame of the mission. So, intent, uh, for instance, you intend how you intend to conduct your maneuver. Uh, so your and your from how you're going to get to your starting point to your assault point and. Um, and uh, then how you're going to prepare uh, for the assault, how is the uh, movement going to be conducted. Uh, once you get to your objective uh, rendezvous or objective uh, rally point, and how are you going to conduct, uh, are you going to conduct reconnaissance and how will that be done if, uh, if you do it? Um, what should you presume do to prepare for, uh, for, uh, for this assault? And um, of course, a plan for the ass uh, assault itself is mentioned in the concept of operations. And finally, con consolidation and reorganization. Uh, once you've done your assault, how are you going to consolidate your forces? That means uh, assemble your people again and reorganize them so they're ready for new tasks. If you have casualties, uh, you might have half the uh, uh, second squad lost. You're going to fold them into first squad, for instance, or something like that. Um, that, that's actually, if I might chime in here real quick, that's actually a very important point that a lot of people totally forget about when they when they play missions on the server is is that exact phase, of, you know, what to do once we've actually accomplished something, and that also in game terms would include uh, handling jibs, quite important because you know how when when people come into the mission or when people respawn when they get killed and whatnot, how do I handle those people? It's a specific game thing, obviously. You know, in, in real life, you have to obviously hand, you handle that differently or somebody else is tasked with handling that. But in the game, as the command of the mission, you have to think about those things as well. Yeah, very true. Um, this is also usually the point where people start bitching in game. Yeah, we're almost done. Why, can't, why do we have to consolidate this? It's boring. Blah. And this is uh, basically the most important point of any assault. Because the enemy will, in real life at least, react to an assault. And if you uh, if you just moved in and took uh, part of his uh, terrain from him, or took an important asset uh, during a raid, or whatever, he will re uh, react to that. And you need to be ready f uh, for his counter uh, counter assault. And you do that by be uh, being the fastest to consolidate and reorganize, so you're ready in a new defensive position around what you just assaulted, ready to stop the enemy from taking that ground back. Because he's going to use that you just lost love, guys, uh, trying to gain that ground. Uh, finally, you also mentioned uh, if you have to withdraw, then uh, what's your plan for that? How are you going to achieve that? And uh, what route should we use? And uh, which elements will withdraw first? And how will we do it? Etc. Um, very specific for raids. Uh, a lot of people do uh, uh, do missions with the sole in intent of uh, gaining ground. But uh, sometimes you actually have to fall back after you've done something. Like uh, you have to do a raid where you have to blow something up. But most people forget that they actually have to get out of there again afterwards. And you want to make a plan for that. Yeah. Okay. Um, so next thing, you've done your concept of the op operation, and you want to make a plan for your fire support if you have it, and uh, what the purpose of your fire support is. You always need to formulate the 
that intent to your FO or whoever's in charge of your artillery. What do you actually want them to do? Is the purpose of the fire support to uh, 